I think finally, and I've been guilty of this, I have to admit that I've been one of those betters who it's not that I haven't taken the Diamondbacks seriously because clearly they have talent. There's no question about that. It's that I just, I guess I just didn't believe in them, honestly. I didn't believe they had what it takes to get this far. Here they are. Matt just put this in the chat. The Diamondbacks have the best record, including the postseason, at home in the last two months. I don't know if some of this has to do with them playing out west and maybe we don't pay attention to them. But I also think there's something to the to the effect too, Chelsea, when you talk about the other teams in the in the National League, then there are just other teams that we automatically give more attention to. Maybe it's the Dodgers, maybe it's the Braves, whoever it is. So when you're the Diamondbacks, they're that team that, that has kind of snuck up on us. Well, also because a lot of their best players are young guys. Like look at Corbin yeah. Carroll. Uh, the season that he's had and he's not the household name just yet like I guess he is now that people are starting to see but it's just because he's young and he just hasn't been in the big leagues that long compared mm -hmm. to guys like Mookie Betts or Freddie Freeman Matt Olson or Ronald Acuna Jr but we can we've seen it he can be a game changer to this lineup not only is he good at getting on base He's good at stealing bases, and that changes the game and the game plan so much when you have a guy on second base as opposed to on first because it takes away the double play. And also your pitcher is kind of looking over his shoulder, kind of wondering. And I think that is when we saw this season and the new rules, the Diamondbacks were a team that everybody pointed at and said, hey, these new rules are going to benefit this team. And we've seen it, right? We've seen them ride it all the way to the World Series. So I think that they'll continue to do it in the World Series, you know, stealing those bags and uh, playing that gritty sty uh, style of baseball to where maybe they're not hitting the home runs, but still a team mm -hmm. that can hit for average. And this is where I think they had the upper hand on the Phillies is they're a team that hits better for average. Their offense is more repeatable than the Phillies, who are very much feast or famine. They're striking out nine times a game or however much, or they're hitting home runs. Like, it's just not a team mm -hmm. that's really hit for average, with the exception of, like, a few players, like Trey Turner. So uh, we'll see. At least the Diamondbacks, I feel like, have a repeatable style of offense that should show up, at least in some regard, for every one of these World Series games. Yeah, they're grinders. They're plucky. They got moxie. You're going to hear all those adjectives here over the next couple of days describing the Diamondbacks. And you know what? They're not wrong. What's your read here on a game that has a pretty tight spread? Yeah, I'm going to have to go against my Chicago Bulls in this one, even though they're at home. I think, like you said, Chelsea, a lot of high hopes for the Thunder this year. They're going to be a really fun team to watch. So I'm going to take the one and a half with the Thunder. I mean, I couldn't fault anyone who wants to just play the Thunder on the money line. Young, budding superstars. Again, you have Shea Gilders Alexander returning. He's the team's leader. Chet Holmgren is in his first full healthy season. He's going to make an immediate impact. Josh Giddy is someone that teams are going to have to look out for. Both of these teams, their rosters, with the exception of Holmgren uh, being on the floor this year, are relatively similar to last year. So you can kind of look back a little bit uh, at last year's games between these two. Thunder won both of them. And what I really, you know, look towards in both of those games is that OKC dominated in the paint. They outscored the Bulls 132 to 90 uh, across those two games combined in the paint. I think we see a similar story there, especially with Holmgren in the fold this year. Just a lot of really fun, high expectations for this Thunder team and the Bulls. I mean, they, they need to start the season really well and win a ton of games. Otherwise, they could be um, kind of blowing this thing up early on I just uh, I really like the Thunder in this spot tonight it is hard when you don't really have a big sample size or any sample size and you know you can't totally look back at last year's games because things have changed but in this one I'm going to take the points with the Thunder <laughs> you've also got Pelicans at the Grizz tonight what is the play here yeah, Jinx, I only had one play yesterday. I had the over in the Nuggets and Lakers that lost. So already 0-1 on the season. I am taking things very slow, even though I do have two plays tonight. But those are going to be my only two plays. I have to start the season a little conservative, even though I'm very excited for it. But in this one, I'm also going to take the points with the road team. This is a brand new roster for the Memphis Grizzlies. Well, at least early on in the season, I should say. No John ja Morant, no Tyus Jones, he was traded. No Dylan Brooks, he was traded. No Steven Adams, he's out all season with an injury. 
Yes, you bring in Marcus Smart, he'll make an immediate impact. But in this specific matchup with the Pelicans, I think the Grizzlies are really going to struggle inside, containing both Jonas Valanciunas and Zion. I mean, those two are going to garner a lot of attention, especially when you have Xavier Tillman, who's starting at center and is going to have to defend Valanciunas. So if, if you know, those two garner a lot of attention. They, they bring in some of the help defenders that leave CJ McCollum and Brandon Ingram out on the perimeter. Those two can do a ton of damage. So really based on the personnel issues that Memphis is dealing with right now, I'm not sure they can slow down New Orleans. So I'm going to take the Pels on the road uh, with the points. But again, if you want to take them on the money line, couldn't fault you there. But we've got to talk about another headline that I just saw. Looks like Will Levis is going to get the start for the Titans. You, Lucy... Uh, Do you know him personally or did you guys just go to the same middle school? Yes, I have never actually met him, uh, but we do follow each other on Instagram. Um, I, we have uh, like talked, but yesterday, yeah, I put that on my story, tagged him. He liked it, so there you go. Um, very exciting for Will Levis. This is uh, this is a huge deal, obviously. Maybe I will bet on the Titans this week in this case because he, I think, is very talented, and uh, this is this is a huge deal for the uh, the people of Connecticut and the uh, the school that we went to, and not at the same time even, um, but it's still a very small school, so not many people that you you see went there so it's kind of special but this is uh this is a big deal i'm very much looking forward to this was very excited when i saw that news i was like hey this is exciting he has not started yet (laughs) he was in london he posted a a photo he was like cheerio i was like yeah well now we'll we'll wow now we'll see you play (laughs) yes yeah (laughs) you really (laughs) nailed the, the lingo over there yes very good um but yeah so this is this is a big deal very excited about this Now, Kansas City may still be the favorite in the AFC, but Jinx, it's actually the Ravens that are the biggest threat to the Chiefs, not Buffalo or Miami or some other team. I'm going to disagree, but it's pretty close. I'm not ready to give up on the Bills just yet. I need the Bills to put a beat down on Baker Mayfield and the Bucs this weekend. Here's the thing. The Ravens have beaten the Texans, the Bengals, The Browns, Titans, and the Lions. So decent, decent number. I mean, they're racking up wins, but that's not exactly a murderer's row. So I I think to me, the litmus test is, is Baltimore playing right now better than the Bills? No question. But if we're looking at the totality of the season, I I think it's the Bills. They do have a better defense. They are more battle-tested, and I just think they have more talent. Will they put it together? I don't know. I'm right there with the Ravens. Like, I'm right there. But I I still believe that Buffalo is the biggest threat. Talk to me in a few weeks. Maybe I'll feel differently. But right now, I'm sticking with Buffalo. Like, they have to be better than this. I think the team we're forgetting here is the Cincinnati Bengals. Just because they're 3-3 three and three does not mean that this team could be a problem in the postseason. Because haven't they been the team that has kind of played Kansas City really closely, even at Arrowhead? So I know it's not a team that looks great right now, but think about it. The postseason is worlds away. This is October 25th. Because if we're talking about regular season games, yeah, sure, you can say the Ravens. Uh, but isn't that the knock on Lamar Jackson is like the postseason numbers. And that's what we're talking about here. Right. I'm not saying that I agree with that narrative. Mm -hmm. I am just saying it is a different conversation when you are talking about a team that contends, uh, with another team in the postseason, as opposed to another team that maybe just posts the same regular season record. So I think we need to keep our eyes peeled for the lowly three and three (laughs) Bengals.